The story of BCRC is one of evolution. We started with some very small projects that we contributed to. We were a minor player in the funding game, but it was at the time when uh, both governments and even the universities were starting to recognize that if they were going to be able to do the type of work that was necessary, the industry itself, the beef cattle industry, should be at the table, both in funding and in deciding which projects would be the best ones to proceed with. A council could then facilitate discussions and, and not act on its own either, but to work with those government research institutions and the university institutions to identify the type of work that would both benefit the industry and quite frankly contribute to the advancement of the quality of the product, the safety of the product, the health of animals. You know, those are all the, the high level and continue to be high level priorities today. Provincial and federal governments were starting to move away from the big extension roles that they had been playing for decades. So we started to look around the world, what, what's being done? The U.S. had a, a national checkoff system in place. Australia had a very active checkoff funded research program. And we decided we, we should get a national checkoff established across Canada and that research needs to be a critical component of that. The National Checkoff was able to support PCRC. One of our concerns from day one is how do we get the information to producers and have them have them use it, have the, have the uptake on it. There was about 90,000 beef producers across Canada, and that's not easy to communicate with a group like that. There was always the criticism that there was lots of good research being done and the word wasn't getting out. And Council realized that a fair ways back and decided, well, there's no point in funding this research if it's not getting into the producer's hands where it can be effective. So the extension part of the work that BCRC has done has just grown over time to meet the need. We've continued to grow and it's through demonstrating value to industry and to producers. Understanding that if we strategize and fund priority research, but also broaden to focus on extension, there was value to that. And I think with that, um, we spent a lot of time communicating with the industry about the importance of industry dollars in terms of leveraging those government investments. Without industry dollars, government investment doesn't flow. And so we were able to not only bring increased industry funds to the table, but then multiply those by growing the uh, government investments in research across priority areas. And this was really critical, and I think that was a lot of the communications with industry, is that there was a lot of priorities not being addressed. Uh, forage is a great example where capacity was declining because there was a lack of funding. And so it was a lot of communication to get to where we are uh, in terms of working with producers, working with government, working with research institutions, ultimately to ensure that we were addressing priorities of, of the industry and, and most importantly producers. We have a really diverse group of producers on our research council. They want to be there. They want to read research proposals, which not everybody wants to read. And they're passionate about what they're doing. You look at the picture and the history of our ranch and the pictures of cattle and how we used to raise those cattle and how things have evolved. It's incredible, it's a slow progression and you don't realize it, but the amount of change in the industry. You know, at one point a 900 pound steer was finished and now we don't even start finishing them until they're 950 pounds. There's not one aspect that makes any operation successful. It's all these little aspects we keep improving over time. So that's where sometimes people forget about the role research plays in that is because it just it happens so gradually and in, in increments. When we went out to industry to propose an increase in the national checkoff from $1 to $2.50, I mean, that's a hard conversation to have with producers when you know it's coming out of their pockets. And what was really neat about that period of time was you know, research, which was pretty underfunded at that point, was going to take a big increase of that funding. And that's really what drove the buy-in from producers. And so that was probably one of the biggest moments of my career. The fact that they said, no, this is really important for our industry and our future. It was very fulfilling, knowing that we put a lot of work into a strategy that we thought would drive value for them. 
We've developed a research strategy so that we're not just making random one-off decisions every time a research idea comes. And the way we develop those priorities is partly discussing them with our producer council, you know, 13 producers from across the country, but also a broader group of producers outside that. We get the input of researchers who work closely with us. We get the input of other funders. We get input from government policy people as well. The issues that are facing the industry don't stay constant. They evolve over time. We're just not doing science for the fun of it. We want to have outcomes that are positive as well and have an impact on society. And that takes people who do understand beef and cattle production. And the mentorship program that the BCRC has established has been critical for that because it's really, you know, a lot of those people they've trained are straight from the city and have never been on a farm. And so that really helps, uh, you know, focus their perspective and give them an idea of how they can use their, their skills. And once you have those linkages and teams of, of scientists that are capable of working together, you really have a powerful group. BCRC's made it so that we're, we're not afraid to reach out and get the people and the expertise around the table that we need to get the job done. Innovation's a long-term game. You don't, you know, stop and start it. And so, you know, I hope that we can see in the next 10 years continued advancements in productivity and growth, and also continue to demonstrate to the public that we care about the environment and we're continuing to reduce our environmental footprint. And I think if we can demonstrate those things with measurable results, we'll be a pretty good place.